Hello and welcome back to Galgorm Hall. We are going to turn this brown embankment from this to something that looks like this. Okay, so for stage one we are going to put down some static grass and for that we will need some PVA glue. Um, it's important also if you haven't already done so to make sure your embankment or whatever area that you're covering in grass has had some sort of paint work added beneath preferably in a brownish color because as thick as the static grass will go on you will see spaces in between it and um, once it dries off so the it's best to have an earth colour placed in beneath. Okay, so with the PVA now down and ready to go, um, we can go ahead now with our static grass. Now I'm not going to go into detail in terms of static grass applicators that are available. There's an awful lot of them out there on the market and indeed you can make your own using um, one of those cheap Poundland fly swats and uh, a metal sieve. Uh, and they they do work well I've used them in the past the only thing I find with the sieve option is that it's an open top and if you're shaking vigorously at the grass coming through um, it does tend to sort of pop out over the top so what I've gone I have a, a, a WWS one and I'm also using the WWS uh, 6mm summer blend for my embankments Again, they have a great range of products out there. Um, I bought these at the time that Richard over at New Junction had um, demonstrated them and was able to pick up a 10% get discount. I'm not sure if that's still going, but it's well worth checking out anyway. So with static grass applicator, you need a metal um, grinding point for one end and then with the other would you, oh, I need to switch the thing on of course with the other we're just going to vigorously shake our applicator right over this entire area let's get untangled here now you will find that this stuff goes absolutely everywhere so but don't worry about it because it all cleans up and we can gather it all up and use it again. And the one thing I have found with this WWS scatter is whenever you bring out the bag it does come out in quite a bolly effect and it is worth teasing apart as you put it into your, your hopper. Um, otherwise you tend to sort of, it stops um, dispensing whenever you shake it. Okay, need to fill up. Right, for the second pass, I find that you need to also sort of go over this two, maybe even three times to get the covers that you want.
Right, I think that might just do it. Now, the next thing is clear up. Okay, I'm sure you've seen some of this before. Um, we take a hoover and we hoover it all up. Now, if you don't have a little um, handheld one like this and you're using a bigger hoover, just stick a uh, stocking over the end of it uh, to catch all the grass so that you can use it again. Now hold your ears. And there we go. So the grass, I am going for um, sort of a summer, midsummer range, and you get that sort of a bit of a yellow fleck as some of the grasses dry off. Um, you can sort of manipulate the grass around a little bit, but to be honest, I've just sort of left it as it is because the, the mix of color sort of gives that effect anyhow to it. So we'll let that dry and then we'll come back for stage two. Okay, so this has been left to dry overnight and I've just given it another little hoover just to lift any um, other uh, remnants of loose uh, static grass that haven't stuck. Now, it's, it's quite green at this stage. Um, there is a little touch of yellow in through that um, summer blend, but I do want to soften it a little bit more. So for that, we are going to use the um, WWS Wild Meadow and again this is a six millimeter um, length strand. Now you can get um, layering glues from WWS and other um, manufacturers as well but I saw this being used over on um, Lewis's uh, channel of Mouldy Raspberry and checking with them it seemed to work very well so I am just going to use good old hairspray and what we're going to do is we're just going to casually spray that on some areas and then again with the static grass applicator we will just add a touch of that wild meadow And it just helps soften it a little bit. Hopefully you can see that in the, in the picture. And once again, we'll just run the hoover over the top of that and it'll lift some of the, the heavy clumps that um, won't settle. So once again, cover those ears. Okay, so for the next stage then, um, we're going to start adding the clump foliage. Uh, so I'll go and gather all that stuff up and we'll come right back. Okay, so for the next stage now that we have the static grass all down and it's dry, um, before we start adding any shrubbery, um, I want to add a line of fence posts along here. And it's better to do that prior to putting any shrubbery down because it means you can sort of get it in around the wiring and the fence posts rather than doing a retrofit of those posts afterwards. So if there's any number of posts available on the market. Ratio do a nice Great Western um, plastic uh, set of posts but I've gone with the uh, scale model scenery um, four foot posts uh, and it also includes the wire um, to string or to thread through those posts. Now those posts come uh, on a wood fret and they've all been laser cut 
and all I have done in addition to that is to give them a wash of a sort of an olive green and a brown mix um, just to give that sort of weathered down appearance. So this gets a little bit tedious doing this but it's a necessary evil. Now I'm going to start down at this end which will be where the level crossing is. Now I know that the level crossing gates themselves are 10 centimetres wide so if those gates were to swing closed to stop a train passing through I need to ensure that the, fence, the gap from the post on this side to the start of the one on this is 10 centimetres. So with my ruler here I'm going to measure that roughly and then with my little pin drill I'm not going to put the first post in right at the edge I want it back off the edge of the road and we're just going to drill a little hole through and that one's actually reached the baseboard so I need to ensure that I have enough depth I need to drill into the baseboard a little bit these posts are much easier to fit whenever you're applying it to a plaster bandage or um, a paper mache type scenery on the lower sections of your baseboard where it hits the solid baseboard it's a little bit more difficult hopefully you can see let's see if I can get that into focus do you see that little line just before the final uh, just there that little line is your marker so everything below that line will go beneath the surface so that gives you an idea of the marker or the depth that you need to have your hole drilled now with that one being so low down I'm just going to test fit it first And it is too high so what I'll do is I'll trim it because I don't want to well maybe I can try and drill a wee bit more in oh there we go right the way through that's good we'll test fit that again short just by a little bit I think the drill bits slightly smaller than the actual post which isn't any bad thing because it sort of tight you know clings onto it tightly when you push it through in the bandage but in this case it's not working so I'll just trim a wee bit off the bottom of that okay that's much better now so we'll take just a little blob of glue we'll find that hole again and we'll just drop that fence in there and you want to try and make sure that it is facing in the direction that you want the wires feeding through and we'll make it as straight as possible as we can now the next post will fence posts the gap between fence posts is anywhere between six and eight feet so I'm sort of going in around the seven feet mark just uh, so what I'm doing is actually measuring 25 millimeters between each post for the next one to go in that one's perfect drop that one into place too and again we're using that little line as a guide and ensuring that we have a nice running space between the both posts and we'll just run that right up until the end here okay so you join me back just as I'm fitting the final section of wiring to this bit of fence to say this is frustrating would be an understatement just being able to find the holes is a challenge in itself and then if you get a kink in the wire it doesn't want to go through the holes but I'm there now 
and I just wanted to show you this bit um, just sort of from the completest point of view but also one of the issues we will have is getting the fence taut you can, oh, you can see on that second one from the top, this one here there is a bend to it so what I have been doing is I'm getting it into position where I want it to be just hold on to that and I'm pulling at the other end to try and tighten it out as much as I can but I've also found the simplest method for gluing these into place is with some super glue and I'm just letting it run down the side of the fence post anything shiny that shows up later on can be disguised by a shrub or two and once that's dry I can pull it tight and I'll repeat the process at the other end so I'm going to finish that let it all dry off and then we can get in to the actual shrubbery on the bank okay so before I start placing the foliage onto that section of the embankment I thought I'd bring you over here to the the workbench and I would just go through the actual products that I'm going to use uh, to create the scene my idea is, is once I show you this you will be able to identify the products that I'm using and then I can just sort of go through a, a sort of speed it up um, video montage of me actually sort of uh, building up the the scenics on that embankment rather than sort of talking through each sort of process so one of the first products I will go with are just the bushes from Woodland Scenics um, I'm going to use a range of different colors we've got these dark green ones and I have a box sort of a mixed of mid and light greens and the dark ones I like in particular um, as whenever you sort of bunch them together they make a nice sort of to me they make a nice gorse bush you know those um, thorny bushes that have the yellow flower in the spring um, and to me they just sort of epitomize those whenever they're lumped together like that so that will be one um, range of the foliage that I'm using along with the lighter greens the lighter greens then I can use to sort of blend in the colors um, you know newer growth or uh, maybe even sort of those are parts of the shrub that are sort of beginning to die off Next we will have again Woodland Scenics products and this is the foliage um, this one actually I haven't opened but I have the other one here and it is the dark green that is F53 there is also a medium green which I'm not sure I'll use on this here but it's F52 now this here comes in a matted format um, and what you do is you prise it apart tear off a section that you want and it gives that sort of effect of uh, um, I suppose hawthorn and that or you know um, uh, those sort of thorny briars and that that you would get sort of mixed in amongst your shrubbery and that um, also it works very well as a carpeted sort of uh, layer of well, not maybe on an embankment but you know on the side of a wall um, like, like ivies that sort of thing climbing up it so we'll use some of that we're also using again another Woodland Scenics product and this is their briar patch now um, I had never heard of this stuff before and, and speaking with some uh, other youtubers Tim Cooper from Scrapline actually um, recommended this one to me and I've got to say I do like this product again similar to the foliage before it makes up a great sort of bracken um, rough hedge type product but what it has is um, hopefully you can see sort of little plastic strips to it that this foliage has all been attached to it and whenever you get that on to your scene it can just sort of look you know like a, a, a nice wild shrub um, or even the you know the, the development of sort of a little hawthorn tree you know sprouting out of the undergrowth so it's, it's a great versatile um, 
product it breaks apart very easily so you can use little bits of it on the on your your scene or go for the larger um the larger sort of structure like this you know and and develop that kind of um uh, tree effect so that's a really nice product they come in a different range of colors i've just gone for the medium green but i do know that that it's available there and a brown you know, sort of um probably something more towards the autumn season whenever leaves are coming off it would look great too and then finally what i will do is once i have used the most of these shrubs and that to um, layer up the embankment what i like to finish with is some of the blended turf uh, this is the burnt green now it's just sort of fine tufts of what that pre those previous um, uh, the bushes and that would have been but in a lot finer uh, consi consistency and what I like to do with that is sort of to sprinkle it onto the grass and it just gives that impression of either little tufts of grass or uh, you know, weeds that are beginning to just sprout up on the um, and through the the basic gra um, grass scenery. So let's take all these over to the embankment, and I'll stick this wee video on to a bit of a speeded up version um, of the normal, and hopefully you'd be able to get an idea of um, how to sort of go to. Um, put one of these sort of scenes together.
Right, well that's in place. Do I like it? I'm going to live with it for a couple of days and just look at it before I decide to glue it down. Um, probably best just doing that just in case you want to make any changes. But that's the process anyway. Uh, I'll leave it a day or two and then we'll come back and we'll get it all glued into place. Okay, I think I'm happy with that now. I've just made a few slight modifications to it. I've added a little bit more of the the foliage to the on the left hand side just near the tunnel entrance and I've removed a few of the bits of flock along the top ridge of the embankment which I felt were just it was just a bit too much up there. So anyway, we're now at the point where we're going to have to glue this down. Now I'm going to use a combination of things. I'm going to use just neat PVA glue and that'll be primarily for the, the the thicker tufts of foliage such as that dark green um, uh, you know gorse type one and also for the briar patch but the rest of it is going to be uh, similar as to how you would put with ballast I'm going to spray water onto the surface and then pl uh, apply diluted PVA onto that now the problem you have with that when it comes to working on a slope such as this embankment is that gravity plays its part and the water and the PVA can run down and create channels along in this case it will be the road surface so I need to be very careful of that I'm going to expect a certain amount of glue to come down towards the road but I have kitchen tile there on hand as well just in case I need to mop any sort of lard patches up but what I'll do is I'll start at the top of the hill and I'll work my way down in the hope that um, some of that uh, watered down PVA will uh, get absorbed into the materials as it works down and hopefully we'll not have too much of the bottom but anyway I'm going to show you a little bit of what I'm doing here and then I'll go away and I'll finish it and I'll come back whenever um, it's basically all uh, covered in, uh, in PVA uh, just to show you the finished result so with regards to the likes of these gorse bushes and that, I'm just going to squirt some PVA um, in underneath that. Try not to move as much much of this if I can because I'm sort of happy with how it's all positioned and I don't really want to change that too much. I'm just sort of sticking that nozzle right in under it and giving a good squirt of the PVA as I go along. Hopefully you can see that. And what we'll also do is whenever I start doing the diluted down PVA, um, I will soak a lot of this mater material as well. Um, to make sure that we have it all covered and you'll see I've made my first air so let's get that rid of that I just don't want it to stay in the roads and that's why I'm very conscious of making an error like that so we'll do the briar patch next and give it something to hold on to Okay, so with that done, we'll add some of the water and like I say, we're going to start at the top and we'll just work in small sections at a time. And I'm soaking that darker flock too. And then I'm using a syringe. And we're just going to apply it to any of the areas that have added flocks and scatters and
just like that. So look, I'll carry on with this and we'll come back at the end and you'll see a very white embankment. And that's it. Now it looks a bit of a mess now, I must admit. And for those who maybe haven't done this before, you're going to think, what on earth have I done? But the beauty of PVA is that it dries clear and everything on there will set hard. And that's what we want. We want the appearance of natural growth in the landscape, but without it skating off all over the place whenever you uh, knock against it or you're doing some other work in around that area. So, but let that dry. It'll probably take a good 24 hours to do so. Maybe less with this, the warm weather we're having at the minute. And we'll come back for one last little extra detail I want to add, and that will conclude this video. Okay, so now with the glue dried, there's only two final pieces of work that I want to do in this. Um, sort of to make it finished. The first you might be able to notice there on the top of the picture um, there's a little bit of watered down uh, PVA that has been applied to the ballast. What I've done is I've sprinkled a little bit of ballast along the edge there just to soften that edge between the ballast line and the grass just to give that impression that you know one is working or sort of blending into the other and it's maybe been a while since there has been some ballast left but I've just followed the normal procedures uh, that you would do whenever you're doing track ballasting. The other thing I want to do is to soften the edge alongside the road and what I've done there is um, I've mixed up, not mixed up, I've made up a little um, container of uh, real soil um, basically you're taking soil from your garden, you're letting it dry out naturally or put it onto a tray in the oven. Once it's dry, take a little cup full of it. I've just used um, a cap off a spray can and then place a stocking over the top of that and sieve out until you get a nice fine grain. So what we're going to do with that is just sort of sprinkle it on. Now you'll probably not get to see an awful lot of this here because this big container is in the way. But what I want to do is just put it along the edge of the road. And maybe also down the track a little bit too. And we'll take a brush and we'll just sort of work that into the edges a little bit more. And basically what we're trying to do here is, you know, in most country roads, yes the grass runs right up to the edge of the road, but invariably car passes close to it or a you know a lorry or a tractor or something like that and you very more often than not you'll have a bit of a, a, a muddy edge to your um, to your roadside rather than just sort of uh, rather than it just being grass and then road so by adding that little bit of soil just helps well it actually helps soften the edges I feel anyway <laughs> With that done, what we'll do then is we'll add a little bit of water again so we can um, moisten the soil there. And I'm just using a piece of paper, I'm just trying to protect the road as much as possible. And again with our syringe, we're just going to add on some diluted down PVA. And I'll try and do it sort of, I was going to say I was going to try and do it above and let it sort of filter down in, but I squirted out too much on that first bit there. I'll 
get that dry same as we've done before and what that will do is just give us that nice little edge to it I'll just tidy up some of this glue that's run into the road a little bit too much there I'm going to let that all completely dry that now and then I'm going to post up some images just of the final piece just so that you can see it now I've actually been working on other parts of the layout too uh, primarily the embankment in behind the goods yard and the opposite side of that um, part of the main line too so I'll include those photographs too just to show the variation um, of, of it's a basically the same technique but maybe a little less in the way of foliage or adding a little bit more detail in terms of trees and that and I'll just add all those in at the end of this video So that more or less concludes the video. Um, I hope you've enjoyed it and I'll be back again soon with another one. Okay, thanks for watching and I'll catch up with you again soon. Bye.